Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining me, astrologer Patrick Arundel. Today I'm going to do a deep dive on the journey of Mercury through the signs of Aquarius and Pisces in the months of February and March 2020. The journey begins with Mercury in the sign of Aquarius on the 1st and 2nd of February. And the 2nd is particularly notable because Mercury is at 28 degrees Aquarius on that day. Now, later in this story, Mercury returns to that point on the 9th of March. So essentially, it is starting its shadow, its pre-shadow at this point before the retrograde begins on the 17th of February after Mercury moves into Pisces on the 3rd. But the great thing about uh, Mercury in Aquarius is it's exalted. So it's brilliant, a brilliant platform, the airiness of Aquarius is brilliant to project ideas and especially principles and higher beliefs. Some astrologers say that Aquarius actually governs astrology. But once Mercury moves, it does go into detriment on the third. So even though it's not retrograde at this time, it's not at its best. It's not producing the best results. And the reason for this is the watery influence of uh, Pisces and particularly the ruling planet, which is Neptune, which is very much to do with gases, with things moving around, it's to do with water, and it can be to do with distortion. Now, because Mercury is the ruling planet of both Gemini, which rules news, everyday news, quick moving information, text messages and emails, and also Virgo, where it's much more practical and earthy and helps us to have precision and be of service to people and concentrate on what we're doing. No, in the sign of Pisces, Mercury gets bogged down by this watery, gassy fill. And therefore, what seems very factual may not be very factual. So we all need to be aware of the things that we can control, not just from the retrograde on the 17th of February, which begins at 2.19 p.m. GMT. It's also about what we do before then, because this is the pre-shadow period. Because once the retrograde begins, it's going to return in its inversion back to that 28 degree point in Aquarius. So it's going to cover two zodiac signs. Now, in fact, we do have three retrogrades for Mercury this year, and all three start in water signs. In fact, on the 18th of June, it's going to be in Cancer, and it will be in Cancer for the whole of that retrograde. But on the 14th of October, it begins in Scorpio. But just like this one, it ends up inverting into the sign of Libra on the 28th. So that's just an interesting aside. But the thing about Mercury, of course, is it does govern documents, it governs communication, it governs conversation, it governs comprehension, it does govern news, it governs contracts, agreements, details. And it's not just how we think, it's also how we feel, but particularly in the sign of Pisces, because the more emotional dimension, the 12th zodiac sign, is very much to do with reflection. And it could be argued that the 12th house, Pisces energy, is very much to do with letting go of things. It's to do with things ebbing away, which is very Neptunian. So it's possible that something could come up, some kind of challenge can come up to us before the retrograde begins. And I think it's likely that if you're watching this video, that since pretty well the 2nd of February, you have experienced some kind of glitch, frustration, delay, some kind of systems failure, something probably hasn't been working quite as accurately and swiftly and reliably as you would like. And it could even be down to human error, such as me this week recording five weekly videos, thinking the sound was on when it wasn't. Now, of course, I could blame the shadow period of Mercury, uh, of Mercury and Mercury's retrograde and it being in Pisces where it's in detriment, but essentially, it's down to user error. It's down to me not concentrating. But that lack of clarity may have come from the fact that Mercury is in a sign which n is not at its best, and also it's in this pre-shadow period. But ironically, from the 3rd to the 7th, Mercury actually 
has forged a brilliant angle broadly to Uranus, the planet of innovation. So we may have had some great ideas in the early part of this shadow period, but it's how we actually um, deploy those ideas. That may be where things got a bit fuzzy, hazy, slowed down, or we felt just sluggish within ourselves. Now the other thing that's happening on the 7th of uh, February is that Venus moves into the sign of Aries, where it too is in detriment, but it is going to be forging an embrace with Chiron for about three days, but it also forges a semi-sextile to Uranus. Now that's fascinating. The potential, therefore, to work on relationships is definitely heightened by that uh, set of influences. Of course, Venus in Aries is very much the go-getter. It's kind of like uh, the initiator. It's much more fiery. It wants, it desires, and it wants it now, because that's instant gratification, which comes from the rulership of Aries that comes through Mars, the prism of Mars. So Venus isn't quite as charming and beguiling in the sign of Aries. It's about action. But with Chiron in close attendance and the semi-sextile to Uranus and this sluggish, reflective, uh, nostalgic Pisces-Mercury position, I think it's possible that someone could get in touch and it could be entirely lovely. It could be an old colleague, an old school or college friend and it may be lovely to reconnect and arrange to meet up in some kind of way. But if you are considering some kind of relationship uh, revival, especially with uh, Valentine's Day on the 14th of February, when there is in fact a quarter moon in the sign of Scorpio, squaring up to the sun in Aquarius on that day, that could bring up all sorts of issues about jealousy, possessiveness, control. So if a relationship is going to be rehashed and you'll want to talk about it with Mercury in this very sensitive period of time, I do think it's absolutely essential that you're clear and the other person is clear about where they're coming from and why and whether there has been a real ownership of why things didn't work out first time round. If one person just suddenly decides they want it again but hasn't done the work, I would steer really clear. Now, by the 17th, Mercury does go retrograde. But I want to tell you about when Mercury was retrograde in 2014 in the sign of Pisces, because then Malaysian Airlines 370 went missing, came down in the Indian Ocean. We know because there has been some wreckage, but not all of the fuselage. Water, air, the flight of air, Mercury, very much mercurial water, Neptunium, Pisces. But also, during that same period, was when the Russians invaded, uh, invaded Crimea. But the story that they were emanating from the Kremlin was that this was nothing to do with them. This was a citizens' uprising. And the Little Green Men was uh, something that the West were dreaming up. It was their paranoia. And of course, it was a full-scale invasion. So the distortion of the news story at that time was very strong indeed. And of course, we've had a lot of distortion of news stories ever since the Grand Mutable Cross that occurred on the new moon in Gemini in 2016. So just be conscious if we're reading something or we're sharing something of the factual basis of whatever it is we're engaging with. But the interesting thing about this Mercury retrograde in Pisces is that on the day it begins, on the 17th, if we look at uh, the month in an Indian form of astrology, known as duads or dwarves, on the day it goes retrograde, it's in Cancer. It has a Cancerian dimension. Fascinating. So it's in Pisces, but has a Cancerian dimension. So Cancerian is very much about nurture, but also protectiveness and defensiveness. It can be about great care, sensitivity, the home, nurturing, but it can be about resistance, withdrawal, just something to bear in mind. But as we get to the end of the month, and Mercury is drawing into itself more and more, we move into March, and by the 4th, Mercury inverts into the sign of Aquarius. Now, when that inversion happens on the 4th, the Dward on that day is actually for Capricorn in the Aquarius uh, system. So that brings a polarity between when 
the retrograde began in the sign of Cancer, in, with the Toward of Cancer in Pisces, and then in the logical sign of Aquarius, we've still got the retrograde, but it's blessed because it's exalted in the sign of Aquarius, and then we have the energy of Capricorn, which is worldly, shrewd, much more traditional, and that can provide a stabilizing force. But really, from the 5th through to the 15th, there then is a semi-sextile between Mercury and Saturn, ironically, because obviously Saturn co-rules uh, Aquarius, along with Uranus, the modern ruler, and is the singular ruler of Capricorn. So we get an opportunity, despite the retrograde, to try to make things work by collaboration, by cooperation, coming through the prism of Aquarius. But still there may be uh, some misunderstandings, particularly if you're in involved in group situations or you're trying to plan your way ahead. The fascinating thing about the 5th through to the 12th of March is the Sun also goes alongside Neptune. Now, that's incredibly Piscean and the potential for reality to be drained away and for a heightened sense of emotional, spiritual awareness is incredible, it's wonderful in that sense, but it's not so practical. So ironically, Mercury retrograde at this time could offset that complication. And also with Venus moving on the fifth, fifth into uh, Uranus, it's going to forge a wonderful alliance with Uranus, which is the ruler, the modern ruler of Aquarius. So although they're both fixed signs, we're bringing some logic to bear in the early parts of March, but it is going to be tested by the Sun's combination with Neptune, which is highly emotional, and it's also um, very suggestible. So, you know, people can want to get into escapism in all its forms when the Sun is conjunct with Neptune. It's wonderful if you want to do good deeds, give money to a charity, uh, uh, do something on a voluntary basis, look out for those who are less fortunate, uh, that's wonderful, but it's less rugged, it's less in the world in its physical sense, it's more in its spiritual sense. So that's something we just need to bear in mind. But then, by the 9th, well, Mercury comes to that point of shadow at 28 degrees. And then on the 10th of March, it starts to go direct. But it's still in Aquarius. It returns to Pisces on the 16th of March. And then we have an interesting thing happening here because if you recall, we've had Saturn and Pluto very closely together for getting on for a year up until the start of February. But by the 18th of February, Saturn starts to dash forwards. Well, dash is probably a little bit, um, a little bit Sun square Jupiter on my part it certainly starts to move forwards away from Pluto. And some of the punishing uh, limitation that's been so strong will start to uh, ebb away. And then the full moon, which occurs on the 9th of March, is actually in Virgo. And that's going to forge a beautiful uh, sextile to Jupiter and Pluto in Capricorn, which are going to be much more enabling for the rest of that month, the rest of March. So we have things starting to untangle. And I think if there have been misunderstandings or there have been any issues, don't be surprised if it's linked to ports or the sea or air travel. Industrial action often happens when Mercury is retrograde, but particularly likely in the sign of Pisces or in Cancer later this year. Watch out, you can almost guarantee it. So if you're traveling anywhere, what we can do to legislate to offset the impact of Mercury retrograde is to have a backup plan to think about how we might do it differently. And if we do those kind of things, then that can liberate us from feeling that we are a bobbing cork on an ocean with no control over the whole process. We can have some impact on things. Now, if you would like to understand what the direct impact of Mercury's retrograde will be on your zodiac sign, please see the link on the screen or beneath this video where you can click through to my astrology blog and get a sharp, incisive idea of exactly what that will be. And then by the 29th of March, ironically, 
Uh, Saturn has then moved into Aquarius on the 22nd and the Sun has returned to Aries through the vernal equinox. We have the uh, beautiful Aries new moon, semi in Uranus on the 24th. And then we have Mars coming into the sign of Aquarius on the 31st of March. And I think we really are going to see a shift in reality. Because all the energy that's going to be going on in Pisces and also in Capricorn is rather like that riverbed. So Earth carries water. It conducts it extremely well. But if we think we have got this big ferry ship, um, I think it's called the Diamond Princess, that's anchored off uh, the coast or anchored in harbour now, I think, in Japan. Um, we've got about 41 people that have got coronavirus, Neptune, sea, ports. It really is a link. And that uh, Malaysian aircraft 370 coming down in the sea. Watch out for those industrial disputes or any issues toward, around travel that are linked to the sea or water. So I think the whole environmental debate about plastics pollution in our sea is going to become even hotter a topic. We've got the ice cap melting, again, water. And really, this is an opportunity for us to revisit things. So Mercury retrograde can cause those glitches, those irritations, those frustrations, those problems. We might feel that someone's not speaking to us. They might feel that we're not speaking to them. There may be misapprehensions. People see things in different ways, talk at cross purposes. Text messages we think are sent, but the other person doesn't get it. All this kind of stuff is all going to be there, but we can try to rise above it, seeing that Pisces brings compassion and caring. Aquarius energy brings the potential to be more detached, but also rise above things from an individual viewpoint, although of the uniqueness of Aquarius energy, and try to work collaboratively with others. And we've got the energy coming in from the Pisces full moon, uh, the Virgo full moon on the night, sorry, which opposes the sun in Pisces. But that's going to be supported positively by Jupiter, international affairs, travel, and its conjunction with Pluto, which goes from the ninth through till the end of the month. And then also Mercury and Uranus, which forged that great link from the 3rd to the 7th of February, come back into play from the 18th to the 25th in uh, because Mercury is moving forwards, it's picking up its connection with Uranus again, so the potential to innovate is very much there. So the senses of Pisces, which is about our instincts, but it's also about our deep emotions, the logic of Aquarius, the confusion that Mercury retrograde can undoubtedly bring, but the opportunity to repair and mend so, when I did the videos wrong, um, I've learned a big lesson from that. There was actually a wider reason. A computer actually failed. There was a spare computer, so things weren't set up as normal. Now things are mended and repaired, and I'm back on track. And that's how Mercury retrograde works. So, if we can see ourselves less as victims, and thinking that for two months things are going to freeze because we have the pre-shadow period from the 2nd through to the 16th, and then the post-shadow period, which is from the 10th through to the 28th of March, we can't just stop functioning. We still have to take the challenge of life on. And with this knowledge, I hope it will help you to navigate uh, this period of time much more successfully. If you would like to ascend above your zodiac sign and embrace real astrology based on your time, date and place of birth, please see the link beneath this video where you can uh, click to have a one-to-one -one consultation with myself or you could choose to have your character analysis and 12-month forecast produced by me and I'm given a 30% discount for this at this time but this will give you so much crucial information to guide your moves and help you to maximize your opportunities. But for now it's been a real honor being with you I'd be so grateful if you subscribed, if you've yet to do so, and good luck and goodbye.